Hello everyone. Uh, today, uh, today's recording is chapter four, um, volume one, um, of re reporting financial performance homework. So the first question that we're going to take up is a brief exercise four point one four. So it's a brief exercise that we're going to take it up, um, and we're going to go through the questions together. Um, the the question starts for it is that what we needed to do is first. The way to do this question is to to find out what the question is asking us to do. The question is asking us to prepare a partial statement of financial performance for blue collar, beginning with income from continuing operation, include the calculation and disclose an earning per share. So they're telling us what they want to do. They, they don't want us to do the full uh, statement of financial performance. They just want us to do a partial one. It doesn't matter um, if they're asking for a partial or a full statement. We always start with the name of the company. In this case, the name of the company is Blue Collar Corporation. And this statement, name of the statement is partial. So we are calling it partial. It's not a full. It's a partial uh, statement of financial position. Of, sorry financial performance and when are we doing this we're doing it for December uh, for 2020 so it will be for the year end for the year end year ended December 31st 2020 so now the we're going to start off with what is given to us. That's what we're going to start off. The Blue Collar Corporation had an income from continuing operation of twelve point six million in twenty twenty. So that's the first thing we're going to start with is income from continuing operation. And they told us in the question the income from continuing operation is twelve point six million. So it's twelve point six million. Now in the in the question, um, I don't see a tax rate. If the tax rate is given, then technically we needed to calculate the income tax before we go to uh, income tax expense before we can uh, get to the discontinuing operation. But in this case, uh, the income tax wasn't given to us. So whatever the income we have, that's the income after continuing operation. So uh, they both are same. So I'm not going to, we don't have the number for income tax expense because the rate isn't given. The next heading that we are learning in this chapter was the next, is the next topic that we learned was continued, uh, discontinued operation. So discontinued operation. Now, like I said, that operation um, in the in the lecture recording for chapter four, um, once we pay the taxes, everything that comes after this will be uh, will be net of taxes. So everything after this line will be net of taxes. So when we have a discontinuing operation, we are going to only have we, we will have two things. You could have a loss or an income uh, from uh, from uh, from the operation of discontinuing operation. So you could have a loss or you could have an income. In this case, the question told us what do we have it dispose of its restaurant division at a loss of 89,000 net of taxes before the disposal the division uh, operated at a loss of 315,000 so uh, the comp the division operated at a loss so the loss from um, it's called loss from operation of discontinuing if discontinued and what type of business we have uh, it is a restaurant division that we're discontinuing so loss from operation of discontinuing restaurant division so it is a restaurant division and we need to put a net of taxes so in the question they told us net of taxes of a hundred and thirty five thousand so when you're reporting it you have to say net of tax and the amount is hundred and thirty five thousand and then the 
the that's that's the tax amount so it's a net of taxes so they're telling us the the loss is net of taxes how much is the loss three hundred fifteen thousand, and that we know that is a loss so this is a loss we wanted to know the second thing we're going to have you could have a loss or a gain so on a disposal of an asset in this case the question told us we have a loss so we are we have a loss on disposal um disposal of restaurant and then again it is going to be net of taxes they told us the amount sometimes they'll tell us the amount since we're starting with a brief exercise they're going to be telling you the amount but uh, later on when you work out the exercise questions um, you might have to calculate it so they both are losses if they both are losses we're going to add up both of the losses um, in this case um, I'm just going to put this uh, number to the side so that we know that uh, we needed to add or subtract to the uh, income uh, from the continuing operation so in this case they both are losses so what you're going to do is you're going to add them up and then you're going to put it at the side uh, which is going to be four hundred and four thousand and once you do that they both are losses if they're losses what you're going to do is um, you will be if this was my income and the losses are subtracted so um what you can uh, you take your uh, income from our continuing operation um uh, take away your losses from the income and what are we left with we're left with an income net which is a, called the net income in this case the income will be to, uh, 12 million 196 196,000 so that's the net income now we're not left there because in the question we have unrealized gain and loss and this unrealized gain is uh, loss is from a fair value OCI investment so if we have a uh, and the amount is 43,000 and again anything after this point will be a net of taxes they told us in the question that we have an unrealized gain and loss then the next heading so it's just like a heading so this is my heading and my next heading is your other comprehensive income in other words oci other compre hence income so in the co other comprehensive income then what we needed to do is we needed to write uh, what what type of um, uh, what type of gain or loss we have we have an unrealized gain on OCI so let's put it on let's write it then unrealized gain and then it is on fair value OCI investment fair value OCI investment and it is a net of tax they told us in the question it is 43,000 and the 18,000 was the taxes so 18,000 was my taxes and the net amount is um, uh, um, 40 43,000 and then if this was my income and this is my unrealized gain I will be adding it and that will then we'll reach to comprehensive income Compre of income and then what we're going to do is we're going to add the both numbers and then you will get your comprehensive income so that is your final number if that's your final number what we had to do is we needed to uh, double underline it now the next part of the question is saying that include in the calculation and disclose the earning per share now we we calculate um, earn uh, uh, earning per share at two places the earning per share is calculated at a continuing operation at a discontinuing operation and at a net income so those are the three places that the earning per share share is calculated now when we calculate the formula we, we learned it before was the um the earning per share formula was that i'm going to say it again uh, the now if we're doing at three places whatever the if you could have an income or loss you could have a income or loss and then you have a net income or net loss so in this case uh, if the company made an income they are going to be paying the dividends so if they didn't make any income they are not going to pay any preferred dividend so when you calculate your earning per share again it's calculated at this place so in this case um, my income from continuing operation is 12 million six hundred thousand 
minus your preferred dividends since we don't have any divided by number of shares outstanding in this case the shares outstanding in the question was 10 million so that's the number of shares so it will give you dollar 26 now when you're when you're calculating earning per share at this level whatever if you if you in this case you could have a gain or you could have a loss so we're calculating according to what we have in these three numbers so uh, my my discontinuing we had a loss in this case it is uh, 404,000 when you there's of course you you dip minus the dividend here and you minus the dividend if there was any paid at these two places so when you have a dividend you minus it here and you minus it from the net income there is no dividend to be paid um on on the uh on the discontinuing operation so minus the zero there is no dividend here but we don't deduct it at the discontinuing operation we only did if there was any dividend we deduct it here and the number of shares outstanding stays the same and if this was a loss then this number will also be representing as a negative number then we have an earning per share at a net income so we calculated at three places and that is 12 million 196 thousand divided by your 10 million shares that you have it outstanding and that will give you dollar 22 so now if you were to do this you if your earning per share at the continuing operation was dollar 26 minus the discontinuing uh, earning per share at a discontinuing operation that will give you earning per share at a net income again earning per share uh, is calculated at three places even though the question has a comprehensive income but we do not calculate any um earning uh, we do not calculate any earning per share um on the um on the comprehensive income that's not part of the requirement uh for ifrs so that's not the requirement so we don't uh, we don't touch that so next question that we need to go to is it seems like a big question but there's a lot of information in there um so but first thing is asking us to calculate the net income for the year ended december 31st 2020 then we have to do a retained earning and then we have to explain uh what we did is is uh to explain what happened and and we have to come up with the in other words we have to balance the um balance the books when we by reading it here i know that it seems like a lot we are calculating the net income net income when you're doing it we needed to know um are we what are they asking us to do and first of all they're asking us to ifrs if you have an IFRS, we're going to have an other comprehensive income um, uh, um, and um, other comprehensive income and the comprehensive income um, if it's an IFRS. So Pi Corporation, a clothing realtor, re re had income from operation before taxes of 375000 and recorded the falling before tax gain slash loss for the year ended december 31st 2020 and they took this is a gain that seems like a normal gain um on the disposal of our of our equipment we have an unrealized gain um in this case unrealized gain but it is on a fair value net income investment any unrealized gain and loss on the uh, fair value net income investment will be like a normal gain and loss um, gain and then what we uh, sorry then we have a loss or gain on a building um, that's also a no, a part of the norm of the business but it goes under the other uh, expense uh, other losses then we go further we have a gain on a disposal um, of a fair value investments one is a unrealized gain and loss the other one is your um, uh, gain on the uh, realized gain uh, so that what we needed to do is uh, since we are um, dealing with fair value net income investment they are recycled uh, through the um, through the net income but if there was anything to do with um, fair value OCI they will be going with the other comprehensive income but in this uh, up to this point we don't have anything that is OCI so at that point so now let's see if we could uh, kind of start and see where we can go with the question so now we started with the with the 
uh, retail so pika corporation a clothing retailer had an income from operation and it's before taxes and it is 375000 so in this case what they want you to do is they want you to calculate the taxes too so let's uh, uh, we always start with the name of the company um in this case it was a it was a pike corporation Again, uh, you have a, a statement of uh, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to write it. It's a statement of a, um, a statement of um, uh, of uh, they're looking for net income. So that's that's what we have to look at it. Um, where a statement um, I'm trying to uh, a statement of, um, of a financial performance. Sorry, I lost a thought for a second. So statement of financial performance. And then in this case, we are looking for it for year end of December, for year ended December 31st, 2020. And then what we starting off with income from operation. So we're starting from income from operation. So in this case, what we started off with 375,000. Now, when we go from there, uh, in the in the question, um, what I what we read at this point was um, our um, our gains, and those are part of the norm. And then that goes under. Then the next heading we are going to have is other revenue and gains. So any gains or revenues, any other revenues that is not part of the continuing operation, uh, will um, is not the uh, is not uh, part of the operating uh, um, operating activities. They go under the other revenue and gains. In this case, if we take it, our first one gain on a disposal of an of an equipment. So that will be our first one. It's going to be gain on disposal of equipment. And that is twenty seven thousand, and then we go further. We have a um, gain on a disposal of a fair value uh, net income investment. That's also a gain. And in, in, in other words, if it's a positive, it will be gain. If it's a negative, it, they will tell you it's a loss. But in this case, they told us it is a gain. So we also have a gain on disposal of fair value net income investment like i said that anything that is a net income if they call a fair value net income investment uh when we think about that they go through the um any gains on that they go through uh, uh they recycle through the net income plus it, it is a it is a gain so let's how much is that gain the gain is thirty three thousand. Now, this, the other part uh, that we needed to look at it is what else is happening. So we do have a, they do, they did tell us that we have a unrealized gain and loss on the fair value net income investment. So in this case, if it's a negative or it's in a bracket, we know that they it will go. I'm just going to do it here and then we'll come back and uh, show you. Uh, the gain on a disposal of uh, OCI what how much is that because I see there's OCI here and then we see OCI here before we get there let's write um, we have other uh, losses and expenses or you can say expenses and losses they both are same so other expenses and losses the both um, the first one is because I would just wanted to finish what we have here so that we we know that we already taken care of twenty seven thousand. We already taken care of thirty three thousand. So those ones we already taken care of. Now what we needed to take care of is unrealized loss slash gain on fair value net income investment. Net net income investments I always recycled through the um uh, through the um. Uh, net uh, through the net income so in this case what do we have we have a um, unrealized unrealized loss on fair value net income investment and that is a loss and that's going to be 54,000 we know these are losses and expenses we don't need to put it as a negative because it's known that these are my losses and then we already taken care of your 54,000 now we're going to take care of your loss and it's it is on a disposal so we're going to take loss on a disposal and this dis loss is on a building 
so this loss is on a building and that is 68,000 so we already taken care of that now going further they think pike also had the falling account balance on january 1st 2020 we have a retained earning now we have two things we have a uh, accumulator other comprehensive income and they said it is due to a revaluation surplus on land in this case when when we think of a, re, a revaluation surplus on a land is that uh it, it is there's a balance surplus account uh it is an equity account it sits under the equity and it's a surplus uh some we're gonna we're gonna talk about it when we do the revaluation in chapter 11 all i wanted to say is that we have an accumulated other in uh, other accumulated other comprehensive income that income is due to a revaluation of a uh, surplus on land um, if you wanted to see it, I can just quickly show you what, what the question is asking. Um, they are getting it from this one. As at January 1st, 2020, Pike had one piece of land and the original cost of the land, um, I'll race it here. So what they're saying, uh, we have a, we had a land, the original cost of the land was 142000 And then what they did is they did the revaluation model. When you do a revaluation model, model um your gain and losses are uh, are recorded through the revaluation surplus account um uh, or deficit account in this case it's a, re a revaluation surplus now in this case what happens is that it was most recently revalued to fair value on december 31st 2019 so it happened in 2019 so what they said is that it it that if if it happened on the 2019 um so everything was adjusted but then what happened is that it went up in a value by 276000 if you were to think about it it increased in a value of 74000 and how would they record that entry they would have recorded as a debit the land and credit will be revaluation uh, surplus and if that's the case, this is how they would have done an entry. Again, like I said, that and revaluation surplus account sits under the uh, uh, under the equity, and it is a um, when we sell the asset. Now, this is when 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 we record the gain, uh, it goes through the uh, revaluation surplus account, and when we sell, now they told us that we sold the asset. So, if they sold the asset, how much did they sell the asset at? Uh, they sold the asset at 216 that's the fair market value and then what they do is they would have done a um, two entries one they will clear the revaluation account a revaluation surplus account how would you clear it you will debit the revaluation surplus account and credit will be your retained earning of 74,000 so that's what you would have done the 74,000 so now if they were cleared it in the now if this this 74000 we don't need to do anything in our income statement because it, it doesn't sit on my income statement even we sold it it is we have a gain but that gain is through the uh, retained earned through the surplus account so we already cleared it and it went to my retained earnings so we need to do an adjustment on the retained earnings so we don't do anything on the income statement we just have to do an adjustment i didn't do one more entry just to show you so you could visualize it what what we are saying so debit will be a cash and credit will be land now you're selling it you're selling the land for two hundred and sixteen thousand. so this is how we would arrive to it the part i wanted to show you that that was 74,000 does not go on your income statement. It will be going on to your retained earning section when we do the, uh, when we complete our retained earning. So let's, uh, we already taken care of our, uh, um, our accumulated um, other comprehensive income uh, that is due to our uh, surplus. So we already taken care of it. But the other part we needed to care of, take care of is the my uh, is our fair value OCI. We wanted to know what's happening with that. And now we are connecting that with this one. So that's what we're connecting. In 2015, Pike purchased a portfolio of a debt in investment that the company intended to hold for longer term. Anything you're going to hold for longer term, it is going to be going through your fair value OCI. And they said that uh, through the other comprehensive income with a game recycled through the net income. 
The investment in the portfolio are traded in the active market and Pike recorded an unrealized gain losses on the investments uh, OCI. Um, as an OCI, then the books and then books um, books these gain and losses to the net income when they're impaired or sold. Now they're selling it. If they're selling this uh, OCI, uh, this in, uh, fair value OCI investment, now we needed to needed to put it into our income. So that we already have a fifty five thousand was in there. That was my gain. So what they're doing is they're selling the whole portfolio. So what if they're selling the whole portfolio? We needed to um, clear everything from the other uh, accumulated other comprehensive income. Income. so let's look at it what do what do we have it's this in the entire portfolio was sold so in this case when you're looking at the carrying of fair value OCI uh, investment there's a carrying value of hundred and ten thousand from that uh, what we did is we sold it for hundred and twenty six thousand so what if we sold it for hundred and twenty six thousand the difference between the the cost and then we sold it for hundred and twenty six thousand so we have a a gain so how much is my gain uh difference between the both is let's see i don't have a, i do have a calculator so 110 minus the 126 i have a gain of 16000 so now this is the gain here but i did recognize the gain before which was 55000 so i have to, i had a previous gain which was 55000 and i have a another gain which is 16000 altogether we had a gain of 71000 and that is the realized gain uh, that we are going to now we sold the fair value um oci investments now it will be gain on fair value oci investment and that will be for seventy one thousand. so now we have taken care of everything now they also told us the company paid income taxes of ninety nine thousand. so when we uh, when we do that we needed to uh um uh, we needed to sorry uh my screen just moved but um um, I'm just trying to put it together. So now what we're going to do is now these are your other revenue and, and gains. So then we are going to add them together and that will come up to be 131,000. And then let's put this a uh, little bit to the right because that's where it should go. 375 and then that's 131,000. Altogether, we have 506,000. Uh, that's the income after your other revenue and gains. Now we have other losses and expenses. What we're going to do is those are my two losses and I'm going to add them together. If they're losses, we know that this is a negative number. And then what we are going to come up with is income before income tax. So you're going to come up with income before tax, which will be your uh, your uh, your in income you're 506 and then you're gonna it's a loss so you're going to take it away and that will be 384,000 the income tax is already calculated for us so we don't need to calculate it minus your income tax expense uh, of 99,000 there's nothing wrong with if you wanted to put it as a minus and um, there's nothing wrong with it so uh, there's it's just the author doesn't do it so that's why i don't show it but there's nothing wrong with it doing it so then what we do is we have a we are going to end up with the net income that net income is 285000 so that's your net income now the question the b part of the question was asking us to calculate the uh, the retained earning so how do we calculate our retained earning so we started off with the beginning balance and then we could go from there so now the, the calculation of um, our retained earning will be uh, we have a beginning balance uh, balance um, when did we started off with the january 1st 2020 i think we're in the year 2020 they told us what our balance is four hundred and ten thousand. that's the balance we started off with now what happened is we have a we have to add what we're adding is we're adding a net income and then we if we are going to less what are we going to less if there is any dividend in this case i don't think i don't see any and then you're come up with a balance ending balance so the balance on december 31st 2020 so my net income was 285000 and then 
we have a dividend in this case the dividend was not given to us in the question we add both numbers together and that will be my balance um december 31st balance now the, the question is also asking us explain the change in accumulator other comprehensive income in 2020 so what they're asking is we we came up with a balance of 690 six, uh, 695 how do we arrive to that balance so now that's what they're they're looking for is how do we arrive to uh, that balance so that's what the, the question is saying explain the change in accumulated other comprehensive income how do we how do we now we had two other uh, accumulated other comprehensive income i explained it to you before what we did with them so now if you were to if you were to say that is that accumulated other comprehensive uh, revaluation surplus one so now this account will be zero why that account will be zero because we cleared that account to the retained earning uh, like i showed you the journal entry the journal entry i did i showed you uh, the journal entry now with the accumulated other comprehensive income that we have taken care of it when we sold the asset now the uh, they're just saying it explain what happened so one will go through the um, net income the other one will go through the routine earning that's all they're asking us to do so now d part when i showed you the journal entry for the land um if, if you kind of go rewind the uh, videos you will see it what i meant by it so that's why it is zero and this is going through your net income so we already put it in when we uh, when we uh, did our uh, gain on uh, fair value OCI, we adjusted that uh, 55,000 and when we added the 16,000 um, with that. So now the D part of the question is calculate the net income for the year ended December 31st and the uh, retained earning as of December 30. Oh, this was, oh, they're saying calculate the net income and retained earning as of December 31st prepare the financial statement according to ASPE. So what they did is they changed the question. So if they change the question, what they're doing is um, from there, they, when, if they change the question, they want us to prepare uh, the net income that we, that we just prepared uh, using our, um, uh, using our uh, IFRS model um, standards. Now we're gonna use the same, we're gonna use the same information, but what we need to do is we need to calculate it using the uh, ASPE standard. So let's do that. Um, so I know some of the numbers are going to be same, but we don't have a choice. We need to do it because practice makes it perfect. So that's why we needed to do that. So let's do the ASPE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the income uh, from operation. So this is income from operation. So we're going to do the same thing what we did, but we our numbers are going to be a little bit different from the one we did it in um, I, um, IFR because we don't have OCI in, in that uh, in that uh, matter. So then what we have is we have other revenues and gains. And then other heading we are going to have is other expenses and losses. So we have other expenses and other losses. Now going toward, uh, going towards it again. So first thing we're going to look at is the gain. So we have a gain and that gain is on a disposal. So let's do that gain on a disposal, which is your 27,000. And that's the gain. So then what we have is then um, when the when you look at it, the next one is that uh, now we have two type of uh, gains here. We have a fair value OCI and then we have a, a, a fair value OCI. So what happens in this case, uh, we have a, when we're looking at it, uh, we had a, I'm just going to look at the, this gain first before we go further down. Um, I was trying to kind of read the question at the bottom. So we, what we said is we, we started off a gain of 33,000. So that's what happened with the uh, gain on a disposal of a fair value net income investment. So that's your gain on a fair value net income investment. Now, if that's the, the, the that's the 33,000, but we needed to deal with it. Uh, what are we dealing with it? We're dealing with our uh, fair value OCI. So now they both goes together. It doesn't matter. Um, the We are looking at a gain 
um, gain on a disposal of fair value net income investment. So when you're doing that, so what we had to do is uh, we since we don't have any uh, fair value OCI accounts or fair value OCI investments under the uh, under the ASP. So whatever uh, our OCI was, so in this case, whatever your OCI was, will be going through fair value net income investment. So I started with the 33,000. And what I need to do is I needed to record if there was any other uh, investments. In this case, we had two. This one was fair value net income investment. The other one was fair value OCI. Since the ISP doesn't recognize the OCI, then this will also be fair value net income investment. So in this case, uh, we had a we are the cost of the portfolio was hundred ten thousand. What we did is we sold it for hundred twenty six thousand. So we have a gain. How much is our gain? Our gain is uh, uh, sixteen thousand. So then if I add both of them. That will be my 49,000 gain. So what I'm going to re record it, it, it will be a gain on fair value net income investment. And that is your 49,000. So that, like I said that there is no OCI under um, under the uh, ASPE. So that's one thing we already taken care of. So now if we were to do this, we already taken care of this part of the question. We already taken care of that part of the question. Now we're going to go further. Uh, now we're going to uh, we're going to tackle our, our this one. So in this case, um, we we had a we have a realized gain. How much is our realized gain here? Uh, we we sold. We had a land that was worth one hundred forty two thousand, and what what we did is we sold that for two hundred sixteen thousand. What is the difference? The difference between the both is I don't know. Uh, one forty two, one forty two minus the two sixteen. We have a gain, and that is seventy four thousand. So now we are going to put it in here, and then we'll tell you what we are crossing out. So gain on a disposal of a land so how much our gain is our gain is seventy four thousand so we have taken care of it because there's no oci account and then um, there is no we didn't have an oci account so uh, we don't need to worry about it under the um under the aspi so that amount isn't there so now when we're going forward so we still have to deal with some other amounts we didn't deal with these two amounts so these two have we have to deal with it so now we have these two are my losses in this case the first loss is on a fair value net income investment if any net income investment they are booked through the net income so that is your 54000 and then we have a uh, loss on a building and that is your 68,000 so those two are my losses so now um, what we're going to do is this is my loss one two two zero 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 that's my loss and these are my gains and that is 150,000 and then that will give us we add it so five two five and then we subtract it that'll be the income before tax income before tax and that will be your uh four zero three zero 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 and then we have an income tax in this case income tax expense will be same because they didn't tell us that what percent in this case they just said that the income tax expense is that and that will give you a net income in this case the net income is 304 there will not be any earning per share because ASPE does not recognize and uh, doesn't um, um, doesn't have uh, a standard that the the company has to calculate earning per share. Now going further uh, in the question that we also have to do a retained earning. So they think Pike's uh, retained earning uh, under ASPE was four hundred and sixty five thousand. So we needed to uh, deal with it. So if you think about it, where did it come from? In the in the in your uh, in your retained earning, we started out with four hundred ten thousand, and we had an other comprehensive income. So, if ASPE doesn't recognize other um, o uh, OCI, those two numbers are added together to calculate uh, to become that becomes my retained earning beginning. So, beginning retained earning 
is 465,000 and we have a net income and we add our net income which is 304,000 and we deduct if there is any a dividend we deduct it in this case it will be a less that will be zero and that will give us a balance uh, ending balance in your retained earning ending balance in your retained earnings so in this case you're going to add them together and that will be your uh, seven six nine so that will be your ending balance uh, in your retained earning so that's the question that was asking uh, us to do in D to recalculate everything using the SP. Now going further, uh, your E part of the question, what is the E part of the question is asking us, will the sum of accumulated other comprehensive income and retained earning under IFRS equal the balance of retained earning under SP? So our SP's net income was 760. 769 we have to prove it if that's correct so let's do that uh, we have a balance I'm just going to put it in the balance beginning uh, beginning so in if when we do an IFRS we had two uh, we had a OCI and retained earnings so we had accumulated other comprehensive income and then we have our retained earning but under ASPE we don't have a OCI we only have a retained earnings so let's see if we come up with the same balance so the balance we started off with it was that uh 410,000 that was the beginning balance but what we had is we had two uh OCI accounts so one was the um one was through the re accumulate other comprehensive income one was for the investment the other one was for the revaluation so if i add both of them it was 129000 so that's what we started off with 129000 from there we had an unrealized what we had is unrealized gain so then we had an unrealized gain and that was uh, from the fair value oci so fair value OCI debt so this that was from here so we didn't we never recognize it that was unrealized so 120 difference between 110 and 12 um, sorry the balance was uh, the cost was 110,000 and then it went the proceeds was 126,000 what we did is we had an increase of 16,000 so that was the unrealized gain and loss any unrealized gain what was it on on OCI so if it was on OCI we we if it's a gain we add it to the OCI and then we also had a realized uh, gain uh, in this case too and then it was um, I think it was a 71,000 uh, let's see if, did i race it i think i did race it so uh it was um i think we calculated it was a uh, uh 71000 uh, that we calculated it before i don't remember the numbers but if we did calculate it um the uh, let's see if i can recast it and then see so my gain was uh 55000 and then that is on my uh that is on my 16000 let's see this one was 16,000 and uh, that will be give us uh, 171,000. So that's what was my, that becomes my, uh, if you look at it, that gives us my realized, uh, uh, realized gain that is recycling through the, um, through the net income. So first when you think of an unrealized and then it becomes realized when you sell an asset. So we have to, even though it's an in and out, but we have to show it in both. So first we have to increase it. Then we have to take it out the realized gain uh, from the other comprehensive income. Or the the way to do, we could have done it. We should have taken out the 16 and we could have taken out the 55. So those are the other things. So then we had a revaluation on the surplus account, revaluation. Uh, surplus what is the surplus is on a land if it's on a surplus we took it out the 74,000 from here where did we transfer it to we transferred it to 74,000 here when we uh, when I showed you the land entry so that's the other 74,000 and then what we are left with is my net income the net income was different and it was 285,000 go back to the recording when we did the IFRS for the um, net income that was my net income so are we able to 
balance it and we wanted to do is we wanted to have a same um same routine earning balance under both so this is the routine earning balance under the ifrs when you add and subtract this number will be zero then what we are going to do is we are going to start with 410 you're going to add your uh, surplus here and then you're going to add your net income you're going to come up with a 76900 so let's see if we could get the number here so the routine earning we started off with 465 and my net income we just calculated was 304 so that's your net income if i add both numbers that will be 769 so do we balance yes we do balance now, uh, the next question that we had to do was four, four, three. So let's uh, do number, uh, let's do the question four, three. In this case, what is the net income or loss from discontinuing operation reported in two, 2020? And then what we needed to do is we prepare all the, um, uh, the discontinuing operation section. That's what the question is asking us to do. So let's uh, see if, um, we can work it out this number uh, now assume that l rond inc decided to sell demand tv limited as subsidiary on september 30 2020 there is a formal plan to dispose of the business component the sale qualify for discontinuing operation to each one. now just like i said that we if we have a discontinuing operation there always net of taxes so um so we have a uh the operation now they're what they think uh parent uh parent uh data on the operation of tv subsidies as follow so they have a loss from the beginning of the year till september so in this case they they have a loss on what they have a loss on a discontinuing operation and how much is that loss we don't know that um our heading will be discontinued they didn't ask for it but i it's, let's put it in the heading discontinuing operation and what we have is the company has it the comp from uh, beginning of the year so in this case if i do a timeline from january to september what happened is the company had a loss how much was the loss that 1.9 million so then what happened and then it's net of taxes loss from the operation uh from september 30 to 30th to the end of 2020 was 730 uh, 700 so they have another loss that loss was 700,000 so now some of you guys say why can't they put it together yes they can put it together but sometimes they don't like to put it together because they're now they're just looking for it now the question is asking to just give me the income or loss from discontinuing operations so we have two losses so in this case the first law you have to put it in both two so you can put it January 1st to september 30th uh, net of tax and that was they told us uh, net of taxes of 700 and then um, i'm just going to make the pen a little bit thicker so that i could see it um so then that will be uh 1.9 million so oh that's better nine one point nine million then the, the, we have another loss that loss is from september 30th to december 31st and it is also from a discontinuing operation and it is net of tax and the net of taxes is uh, 250 000 but uh, the amount is 700 000 so that's the thing so there's in other words these two could be combined but in when we have a discontinuing operation you could have a, a loss or an income from an operation and then you could also have a, a loss from a disposal so let's see if there was any loss or gain on the disposal estimate loss on the disposal of net assets on december 31st net of taxes of fifty thousand and then the amount is 150,000 so this is also a loss and but this loss is from a disposal so loss on a disposal net of tax and that is 50,000 and that will give you 150,000 so what is my total loss the total loss from a discontinuing operation i add all of them together continuing operation 
and then I add all of them together. So if I add all the all of them together, that will be two million seven hundred fifty thousand. So that's what the question is asking us to do. Now they're saying prepare the discount uh, discounted operations section of the uh, of the income statement when you're preparing the uh, in 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 the uh, income section. So in this case, what they when you show that these two numbers, even though we're just calculating these number two numbers are added together. So let's show you that. So when we have doing a discontinuing operation under there, what we have is we have a loss from operation. of discontinued subsidiary this is where it's, it's a TV units is a is a subsidiary and we're gonna say net of tax if you're putting both together you're gonna be adding your 700 you're gonna be adding your 250 so in this case the net of taxes will be nine hundred and fifty thousand and then the you're gonna add the both amount and that is your two point six million and then you have a loss on a disposal and that is hundred and fifty thousand of course you're gonna come up with the same number but when you when they're asking you to prepare uh, on a discontinuing operation section we only have two things you could have a loss and gain here and you could have a loss and gain on disposal and that is also net of taxes so disposal um, of subsidiaries assets and that is a net, net of taxes and that is 50,000 so that's 275 uh, 2 million 750,000 so that's what the question is asking us to do now it's saying if the amount if the amount reported in 2020 as a gain or a sale on a disposal of a surgery becomes materially incorrect, how you how the correction is reported? So if if something happened, how are you going to report it? Of course, uh, the the you are going to be reporting it. The if the material becomes if it's a it's related to discontinuing operation, what you're going to do is you the correction of the gain or loss on the disposal of subsidy reported in twenty would be reported in twenty twenty one. So if the amount was re reported in twenty twenty, and then uh gain or loss and disposal for subsidy becomes material so if there's any other amount that is material then you will be presenting any amount that is that you needed to report it in 2020 will be then reported in 2021 so you cannot leave it you cannot uh, uh you cannot adjust it the the uh, prior period adjustment for the discontinuing operation it has to be shown in the income statement for the next year um how would the discontinuing operation will be presented on the statement of financial position um um it, how would it be presented the only difference is the how the asset will be discontinuing operation on the income statement we showed you how to do it when this asking for statement of financial position they're looking for a balance sheet so in this another in other words they're looking for a balance sheet now there if you think about it under the ifrs they will be it'll be called held for sale so there uh, it will be called a held for sale um and it will be classified as a um if you could have both asset and liabilities at the end of the day we don't know uh, what we're going to have so but if you think about it when you're when you're thinking of an uh, ifrs it will be held for sale and it, if it's a held for sales it will be recorded as a as a current assets um, if it's under IFRS and if it's IFRS it will be recorded as a held for sale uh, for sale and then if it's if they are assets they will be recorded as a under the heading of current assets so if this was um, if this was a dis discontinuing operation if it was an ASPE the the ASPE what they call it they they will be they have a choice to record them under current or non-current so the the choice under sp is they they have a choice to record them under current or a non-current 
now oh i already kind of explained that what how your answer will be different so that's the part that will be different under under the uh, aspie so you can uh, sometimes the company has both assets and liabilities so in this case if they're asset they will be under current asset if they are the, if they had a liabilities also and they will be reported as a current liability and if there's a assets so they will be they have a choice under the liability they also have a choice to put them under current liabilities or non-current liabilities uh, i'm going to stop the recording here i think the next quite oh no we could do the next one so um, it wouldn't be sometimes the recordings becomes too long and then um, i can't load them on the youtube so that's why um, i was uh, kind of wanted to not finish this question but that it seems like a, this question uh, is a small question so what we could do is we could kind of do it together and see uh, we could finish it fast in this case calculate the net income for the current year assuming that there's no entries in the retained earning account except for the net income and the dividend declaration of 16000 which was paid in the current year so when they're doing it we need they have given us some numbers and we needed to from there we needed to calculate what our income is now uh, previously you probably seen it asset equal to liability plus your owner's equity and indirectly net income is uh, connected here so now they in the in the question they gave us increases and decreases in our assets and in our liabilities and from there can we pin a point what our shareholders equity is going to be yes we can and if we can let's do that so first we let's deal with our assets um our they said we have an increase in my assets so if they're in the brackets they're decrease if they're positive there will be uh in uh, increase so we have a cash increase which is seventy six thousand. we have an accounts receivable which is oh, let's do the other way so the right side so that we it makes a little bit easy for me to kind of uh increase assets so because i have a more room to the right so first we have a cash and it is seventy six thousand. then we have accounts receivable you add the 59,000. We have an inventory that is also increased. That is 140,000. My fair value net income investment that decreased. So that will be a minus of 23,000. And the change will be 252,000. So that's what first one is. Then you have the second one is your increase in liabilities. In this case, we have an accounts payable. And it is it it is decrease if it, it's this is a decrease so we know this is a negative liabilities are negative so the bracket will be a negative in this case because a normal balance is a credit balance and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the eighteen thousand and then we have we're gonna add the sixty nine thousand those are my liabilities so we know asset equal to liability and um equal to liability plus the owner's equity so now can we look at the owner's equity so that in other words um shareholders equity so that will give me an increase in owner's equity or decrease in owner's equity in this case uh the, this number is negative the other two are positive numbers so i will get a positive number of twenty three thousand. and then if in in this case if we're looking for um owner's equity you have to minus it from asset so in other words asset equal liability plus owner's equity if this is my uh, x what we could do is bring the liability to the other side um you have assets minus liability equal to your owner's equity so this is my x so 252 minus the 23 will be 229,000 so that's the increase in my owner's equity so now these two accounts also sits under my uh, owner's equity and in the question they told us what the dividends were so if I were to do that um, we have a what we have is what do we have we have a common shares they are increased by 105,000 we have a contributor surplus which is uh, equal to 63,000 now they also told us in the questions the dividend declaration of 16,000 which was paid in the current year so any dividend that are dividend are paid 
they will be minus 16,000. Now what happens is then what we could do is there is a change in, in the owner's equity that is due to net to income. So our net to income is my X number. So if I were adding and subtracting, I can get my net to income and that will be 77,000. So that will be your net to income. Now, um, you know what we could let's let's do the next one too um and then i will record the other one um in my next recording the other question so uh, while we add it because um uh, it just seems like it a little bit uh we could, we're doing it a little bit faster because um uh, the no, the questions are not as complicated as the the first two that we did calculation of net income Video Bound Video Company has a sole proprietorship, had the following information, had a cash balance, had an accounts receivable balance. So now if you look at it, they're giving us the dates. So if they're giving us the dates, what we needed to know, we needed to know the change before we could do anything, right? So first one is we have a cash. Uh, let's do it here. here. Uh, I think I have enough room. Sometimes I don't, I don't have enough room, so it makes it a little bit harder to do these uh, transactions and my screen is not big enough so let's look do it here we have a cash we have a january balance and we have a december balance because i'm seeing december balances and then we have a uh, change so when we have a cash our january balance was twenty three thousand, and we have accounts receivable and that is nineteen thousand. that is january 1st so we done that now oh this question is gone when I cut and paste I didn't do a good job on cutting and pasting so now what else do we have we have total assets on December so I'm just going to put here a total assets uh, but those total assets are under December so let's put it under December which is your 101 000 and then this is the cash balance of December 31st which is 20,000 I done that. I think this accounts uh, receivable balance is thirty six. That's thirty six thousand. We have taken care of. Now, um, the two hundred thousand we don't need to worry about it because if it, we if a beginning balance ending balance, that means we sold something and we collected something. It would have gone through your cash account. Now, what we what else is uh, given to us in the question? This question is kind of uh, gone everywhere because of cutting and pasting. I'm trying to kind of make a best out of it. Uh, if you have a book, you could go back to the book and look at the question. So the total as of January 1st was 75,000. So that is also given to us. Um, then they said total liability is also given. December 31st are given. So that is your 41,000 so that's what is also given to us uh, 41,000 now the other thing is I don't see they said that we have given a capital balance January 1st and then merchandise taken for personal use that will be my withdrawals so this will be my withdrawal so we already taken care of everything else here the only thing is left is this one and the investment so the owner made an investment they took out some money and they have a capital balance in in december sorry in a capital balance in july so let's look at your capital balance and that capital balance is for my beginning so in this case it is 30 Eight thousand. So we also taken care of that. So we have kind of crossed out everything except the two withdrawals and the investment by the owner. Now, it, they said total assets. So we have cash and accounts receivable. Twenty three plus nineteen doesn't come out to seventy five. Means we have some other assets they didn't tell us. So we have other assets, and that's my X. If if I take seventy five minus the nineteen minus the twenty three will give me 33,000. So that's the other asset that are missing. So same thing here. Uh, we have a 20 plus 36 minus the 101 will give me 45,000. So I'm going to show it again. 20 plus the 36 and equal to 101. That means we had some other liabilities that they didn't tell us. Now, 
the uh, we're going further with with the question is that the the question is telling us uh, some other numbers how we are reaching to the other number so let's look at it and see what uh, what we know and what we don't know now if we know that our assets were total assets are 75 my capital is this can we find this yes your total asset equal to your liability plus owner's equity. So in, if I take 75 minus the 38 will give me 37,000. If this is 37, this is 41. So it it it, it in uh, what happens your liability, your liabilities are negative. In other words, liabilities are negative. If it went, it increased. So there's a change. The change is for $4,000. So your asset, there's a change of 26,000 and we can double check if it is 26. So this one went down. If it went down, it will be a minus. If it went up, it will be a positive in this case. Thir 19 plus the 30, 19 minus the 36 will give me 17,000. 33 minus the 45 will give me 12. Can I add it to 26? If I take 17 plus the 12 minus the 3 will give me 26. Now I can finish off this table that I just created. 101 minus 41, which will be 60. If that's 60, so then we know that um, if I take the minus between those two will give me 28, not 28, 22, sorry. 22,000 and that 22,000 if I take 26 minus the 4 is 22,000 now if you know we all know sorry uh, we all know um, my screen just did that so let's do that so I put it back in where I got the thing from so now what we needed to do is we needed to uh, calc the question is asking for net income so what we have is beginning capital which is 38,000, you add your net income, you minus your dividend, and that will be your uh, uh, dividend or withdrawals. In this case, it's a sole proprietorship. We are gonna have a drawings or withdrawal. It was uh, uh, 11,000. We also have an investment in this case. So let's add the investment. So we have a additional investment, which was for uh, 11, no, uh, 5,000 the investment was 5,000 and then my my drawing says 11 my net income I don't know that's what they want us to do but we know our capital which is going to be your 60,000 so we know our capital which is going to be 60,000 can we find out our x so this is my ending capital and then 38 plus the 5 minus the 11 minus the 6 will give you your uh, net income and if this uh, your net income should be 28,000 sometimes will you put it in the number and see if it works sometimes when we are if uh, the way to look at it if you're going this way whatever is plus is going to be a minus whatever is uh, sorry if you're going this way whatever is plus will be plus whatever minus is a minus if you're going the opposite direction the sign changes so that's it so 38 plus the 5 minus the 11 add the 28 if you don't come up with the 60,000 that means we made a mistake somewhere so i'm going to finish the recording here uh, for the other questions uh, there's quite a few questions i wanted to do but I'll, I'll record another recording for that thank you for listening to me uh, if you have any question uh, do uh, send me a message on on uh, uh, underneath the videos i will reply to that message or do talk to me in the class so that um, uh, we can discuss it uh, further Thank you for your time.